Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Hope you're having a fantastic day. So today we are in part two of updating the AC system in my 1978 Jeep Cherokee. So if you missed the first video, go ahead, put a link in the description below, click back on that, and I kind of explain everything that I'm going to do with this Jeep and the AC system. And a long story short, I'm going to replace everything but the vents and the blower motor um, in the cab. Now I've already did the in the cab parts. In the first video, I explained how AC systems work and some extra things that we're gonna do as the while you're in there. Now I have about two hours into the cab area. Um, now I haven't installed it yet because I'm waiting to get this part done, but it's not really the 25 to 40 hours worth of work. In my eyes, that's just what shops are quoting me. So today we're doing the under the hood stuff. Um, the hardest part is gonna be getting to the dryer and the condenser. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to drain the cooling system, because in order to get to that, you have to drain the cooling system. Now I'm getting pretty good at this because I've already put a new radiator in this once uh, when I first got the Jeep. So I have my bucket on the ground, I have my tube to catch all the coolant. We don't wanna uh, put any of that stuff on the ground. It's not good for the environment. And I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling the accessories in this Jeep while it's draining. Um, after a minute or so, I will open up the radiator cap, then I will pull the battery, and I will start going to the AC compressor, and then eventually the alternator. Now, the while you're in there is that we're gonna do while we're in there, um, if you didn't catch it, is I'm going to go ahead, I'm gonna put a new 150 amp alternator in the Jeep. I went ahead, I went out, I got right here a Power Master uh, alternator. And I don't remember what it was, but it was like 111 amps at idle. Much better than the current 63 amp alternator that's in the Jeep. We're gonna throw new belts on it. You know, just all the stuff while you're in there. Now, we're gonna go ahead and we get that stuff pulled. I'm gonna shut the camera off because pulling the cooling system is pretty easy. And I've already showed it in a previous video. And then we're gonna get everything mounted up. Now, I did look, the mounts that came with the condenser don't exactly work um, and how I want to do it, the dryer kind of bolts into where the battery is, so I want to, I'll, I'll redo some stuff there, not a big deal, but the parts on the table are getting less, so here are all the parts, if you're curious, um, the new dryer, the new compressor, the condenser, we're going to add a pusher fan, the lines now, don't let this fool you, these are not made yet, I've just slipped the covers on, here is the mounts for the um, condenser, don't pay attention to the fan. There is the old evaporator. I have that out so I can pay attention how lines need to go. Here is the under dash unit. I still need to put some tape on here and seal this up and cover this back up with my mat there, just like it came from the factory. But I want to go ahead and I want to pull a vacuum before I do any of that. I'll leave just enough extra hose um, or AC line so that I can look at it, pull the vacuum, cover it up, and then I'll bolt it up. So. Give me just a minute for you. I guess it'll just be a second for me. Probably about 20, 30 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling stuff and I'll be right back. It's been about 30 minutes and I've got pretty much most of the stuff I need to remove before I start doing the air compression stuff. So let me show you what it is. So I got the radiator out, the overflow tank out, the battery out, the fan shroud. I even went and took the bolts off. Now to get this off, there's actually two bolts back there, one on either side, this far side. It's underneath the low pressure line, it's kind of hard to get to. And then uh, the tensioning bolt on the alternator is right there. Now to put the new alternator on, so heads up, I have to pull this dual pulley off, um, but it bolts right onto the other one. So the next step is to go ahead and remove the uh, compressor for the air conditioner. So I'll start by using this one-handed unplugging it so that plug I will reuse for the new compressor to turn the clutch on I am going to go ahead and just cut those lines so take your cutters this actually comes in the kits if you don't have one you can also use some PVC cutters I'm just gonna cut this line here if you can hear how hard it is all right so now everything is loose and I can remove this now don't pay attention to that. That is the old hot wire to the choke. Um, so I'm gonna remove that while I'm in here. I will take these grounds off. And then there's one, two bolts there that hold that in. 
and then these bolts down here for this bracket where you get those off then we can come in here and start with this condenser stuff so one thing I don't know if I need to do but I probably will do is I will remove the grill and the reason being is I want to put a pusher fan on the front pushing through and it's gonna make it easier to get to the dryer if you don't remember where the dryer is it is right back in there um, you can see it down in there basically behind the booby light that does not belong but we're gonna leave the booby lights let's go ahead and get this compressor off and um, keep chugging away at it like I said about 30 minutes into this so we'll see how long it takes That one, let's see if you can see it, right here, is behind this pulley on the fan. So I'm gonna have to get this a wrench, and it is a 9 16 When I get everything out, let me show you what it looks like. I got the condenser out, the dryer out, and I'm going to end up using the stock brackets, not the ones that come with the Jeep Air kit, and I'll show you that. So I took the whole grill off so I get nice, easy access in there. I did another while in here. I have the water pump. It's currently drying with RTV. Um, then I'll put the alternator in. So here is the new condenser. I have it unboxed. And there is the old one with the dryer there. So if you look at them, the new one is much thinner than the old one. They're roughly the same size, but this is the bracket that Jeep Air sends. If I put it in here, this is how the instructions are showing it. As you can see, the dryer would be right here, which isn't gonna work. So I need the dryer inside. So I'll end up just unbolting the old brackets and put the new brackets on, and then I will show you where I'm at. By that time, I should be able to tighten up the water pump. The RTV should be dry enough. Put the power steering pump back on, and we'll get the radiator on, and then start running some hoses for this uh, AC unit. Let's do a quick update. Let me post a picture of what the condenser and the dryer and uh, all that tubing bracket looks like right now. All right, so let me show you what it looks like installed. I had to modify what I thought I was gonna do. So here's what it looks like. Now, yes, this side is up about a quarter inch higher because I used the factory uh, holes to where this side I had to drop down because right here, the high pressure line going in um, was hitting. And I didn't want to chafe a hole right there. So I had to lower that. Now I did put all the seals on here. There's your dryer. It goes out. I did pull the grill as you can see, but that's so I can get the big pusher fan in there. So here is my discharge line here. Here is the bracket. And here is the line that's gonna go into the evaporator. So my next step is I'm going to install the compressor. Um, I'm just gonna set it in there loosely, put the bolts in, the bracket is still loose. Um, I don't know if you can see, but these, none of these bolts are really tight because you can adjust it uh, forward and back and then I'm going to crimp the lines on in the cab and put the AC unit in there and I'm going to pull a vacuum and then I will check the vacuum after about 10 minutes make sure I have no leaks before I put the uh, radiator back in now this whole process I've been on this honestly for about four and a half hours um, but I'm you know doing that extra here and there and let, let me show you so put a new water pump why did i put a new water pump well i was in here and i had to remove all this other stuff so i already had a water pump i put a new water pump i didn't have new hoses i have to run to the auto parts store they're already in they're waiting for me um here's my bracket for the ac and while i was in there i went ahead and i put a new 150 amp alternator so i went from the I put a new four gauge it required six gauge power line right there and then the ground will go to the battery and then i have another ground right here that also needs to go to the battery that is a chassis ground so this will go here and this ground and this ground used to be on top of the old um, ac compressor so it's coming along the hard part is done honestly and that was just getting to this condenser and getting it in 
now is just honestly a matter of bolting the compressor up. I'm going to put it in. I'm going to put the pulleys on. I'm going to make sure all the belts are aligned. Make sure it's nice and tight. Um, I will create these crimps while they're in the vehicle or um, in the engine bay. Let me show you that tool real quick. I just don't want any unnecessary bends. Now, the piece of uh, piping that came with this, I did have to cut and put a new crimp on. And that was this one right here because it came with a 45 facing this way. If you recall the beginning of the video, the Strider's not supposed to be there. I did end up using the stock mount there and then the um, aftermarket one and I had to bend it. Now as for tools to make the crimps, it's actually fairly easy and let me show you this. This is it. Um, there's a release and a uh, lockdown, it's hydraulic pump. You just put these fittings in here like this, they just lock in and this is what makes the crimp. And if you look on there, that's number eight. I've got this number eight line when I get over here for the low side line or the suction line if you look on there it says a half inch and it's size number 10 so i will go in here and do the number 10. so what i'll end up doing is i will figure out the angle of this i will bolt it up to the compressor i will then run it into the cab figure out the angle i need and the fitting i need for the evaporator uh hopefully i can everything be sitting on the ground crimp it in the cab and then again pull the vacuum now one thing to remember is when you're hooking these lines up, make sure you put the appropriate size O-ring and there's different fittings that go on. So what do I mean by different fittings? Well, if you look here, the O-ring is going to slide up right there, the little green O-ring. This fitting here is a flare fitting. I'm not currently using these fittings. You just need to pay attention to what you have. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get everything inside. I'm going to pull a vacuum and I'll show you where I stand then. Again, about two hours in the beginning, about four hours into it now, and that's after I changed the water pump, after I put the new alternator on um, and modified the brackets. Not real hard. Again, I'm doing a lot of extra stuff, but I'll see you here in a few minutes. Well, welcome back. It's been about three and a half weeks, um, and let me explain what happened. So when I left off, I left off on showing you the fittings, getting ready to make the lines. I showed you the dryer and the condenser installed. So the only difference is I have the fan in there now with the front grill on right there. So what happened? I made the lines. I'm going to show you that right now. And they turned out great. No leaks whatsoever. So I have my low pressure line right here going off into the cab. I have my high pressure line right here going down towards the condenser and radiator. Now this is temporary wiring for the fan. I'll explain that in a second. And then you want to make sure your uh, lines, because they will chafe on sharp edges, are nice and secured down. Um, I actually just use holes that were already in the fender like that. And I secured even the heater hose right there. Took off the old one that had metal edges and put a new rubberized one on there. So what happened? Everything went back together, went great. I pulled a vacuum, it held for about 10 minutes. I thought I was done. Boy, was I wrong. Um, went ahead i sent this thing down to a place called the jeep farm they're the ones who rebuilt my transfer case and they only work on these old jeeps full-size jeeps the flat fender willies that type of stuff and they are really good so they went ahead they pulled their own vacuum and after a couple of hours it lost vacuum i just showed you those two fittings just a few minutes ago and one of them was a compression fitting now i forget what i called it but it was a compression style and the other one needed an o-ring well i had an o-ring for some reason get into the compression style fitting and it was creating my vacuum leak so easy peasy they fixed that it cost me about a hundred dollars um but that's my own fault went in pulled the vacuum charged the system it worked great and then it stopped working so i went ahead put the gauges back on it was holding vacuum it was doing everything correct not a blockage in the system well mistake number two on the evaporator there was a Schrader valve that I was supposed to remove. That's the piece that's underneath the dash. I would show you, but I've already discarded the old one. And well, I left it in there. So they had to go in there, you know, depressurize the system, suck all the refrigerant out, remove that Schrader valve, and then they went ahead, put everything back together. Um, unfortunately, like the dyno mat and that stuff was the wrong stuff anyways, even though it was what came on it. They replaced it with all the period correct cork uh, tape and installed everything recharged the system and it works great how well does it work well it's like 40 degrees like i said so 
all that's working well and the final install went well. So the only thing you missed really is the crimping of the lines. Why is it taking so long to get this video out? Well, first of all, all the video that I filmed, uh, the camera kept overheating and got corrupt, no sound, just turned black, whatever. Secondly, as soon as I dropped this off down at the Jeep farm, I caught that cool little virus from 2019 that shut the world down. So as you can hear my voice, I am recovering, doing well. Um, so and I've just been driving it, honestly. I've got just over 100 miles on the AC unit and it is working very well. So lastly, let's talk about this fan. How well does it work? Well, this is a reversible fan from Summit Racing. I think it was $84. So in order to get it to work, I just had to reverse the fan blades to make it a pusher fan. So it's pushing in, you get the big mechanical fan pulling back. Now on highway speeds, it actually raises my temperature about two degrees. Um, I watch on the uh, Holly Sniper system, but that, that's not a big deal. I'm, I'm not running hot. And stop and go traffic and idling, picking the kids up from school, sitting at stoplights, it actually keeps it about two degrees cooler because this big fan is only turning at your idle speed or that low speed um, where this one is constantly going. Now in the Holly system, real briefly how I set it up, I set it up to come on at 175 degrees, turn off at a 170 degrees. Now this mess of wiring here, which is temporary, I need to make it look nice and pretty like the rest of the engine bay. As you can see, it does not look like anything like the previous video. It has all been relumed. It just looks much better. Thank you, Jeep Farm. So how does this all work? Well, yeah, I don't understand how relays work, but it's pretty simple. Here's a quick down and dirty so we can wrap this video up. So I have my relay here. So relays basically work as little power turns on big power. So I have a power wire. It's actually double wired here. And it goes into my relay. From there, it comes out of the relay into this blue line, through the fuse, into the fan, and then the fan goes back to the ground. So that completes the big power, you know, the high voltage. But you're not gonna run through a switch, you're pulling 10 amps. So how do we oh, or close that switch to make everything work? Well, I have that second power line going into the relay here. It comes out of the relay and it needs to be grounded to complete that circuit. Remember, electricity goes in a circle. Well, how do we do that? We're using the Holly Sniper system. It can control two fans and it sends out a ground signal. So this light blue wire here, it goes up to this 10 pin plug here that again, I will make look nice and pretty here in the future. Then when I hit the appropriate temperature from the temperature sensor on the Holly units, it uh, sends a ground signal here, which closes this circuit and turns this fan on. It's as simple as that. You can do this in your garage. So on a scale of one to 10, how hard is this? It's about a six. Not real hard, more time consuming and tedious. So I have 10 to 12 hours into this. You could easily do this in a weekend. But remember, I also did the water pump. I did the alternator and did some other little things while I was in there because, well, it just makes it easier. You have all this open space to get in there and get stuff done. Um, cost wise, my screw ups, learn from them, should cost around 1500 bucks or so, give or take. So I hope you learned something, or at least not put an O-ring in a compression fitting. I know better, but still got in there. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And until next time, uh, next video, we're gonna do a complete walk around of everything I've done with the Jeep because well, the Jeep's done, at least for this year. Because if you know anything about Jeeps, just empty every pocket. And I do have a couple ideas of how to improve this even farther. I just gotta wait till next year.